Okay, so there's a lot going on here. So I've, I'm going to ask you three different questions we're going to talk about. And there's one little new term that's going to come up here a little bit too. So the first question is find the probability, part A, of taking an English class or taking a science class. Well, that means you're either in the English bubble or in the science bubble. So that's going to be whatever 15 plus 55 plus 25 is. Well, it turns out that's 95%. So think what that means, 95% of students are taking either an English class or a science class or both. Okay? The or does not mean just one or the other, it could mean, could mean both also. Part B says science, and there's this vertical bar, English. The vertical bar is a given that, it's a conditional probability. We're going to pronounce part B as find the probability you are taking a science class given that you are taking an English class. Okay? The vertical bar is a conditional given that. So the way we think about this one is kind of think about it as a fraction. Mentally turn your head and think of put science on top of English. So on the bottom is going to be the percentage of people who are taking an English class. Well, that's 70%. Now, of those 70%, what percent are taking an, a uh, science class? Well, don't say... Uh, 80% because actually we're just talking about the English bubble. Of those people in that red circle, what percent are taking an English class, or taking a science class, excuse me? Well, it's 55%. So what is the percent of people who are taking a science class given that they're taking an English class? It's 55 over 70, and that works out to be about 78.57%. Uh, Okay. Part C is also a kind of a conditional given that question. This means the probability you're taking an English class given that you are not taking a science class. Remember the little C here, it means complement, not taking a science class. Well, where are the people in this Venn diagram who are not taking a science class? Well, it's not these people. It's not these people. They are taking a science class. It's these people and these people are not taking a science class. In other words, it's everything outside of the science bubble. Well, isn't that, that's what goes on the bottom. Science complement goes on the bottom. So that's 20%. 20% of people are not taking a science class. That makes sense, because look up here, if 80% of people are taking a science class, 20% of people are not taking a science class. Well, of those 20% of the people who are taking an English class, well, that's these people, that's 15. So we get 15 over 20 ends up being 75%. That's a very typical kind of Venn diagram question. Sometimes you get ors, sometimes you get ands, the, the conditional probability stuff too. Okay, now here's a slightly different question. This is talking about uh, a tree diagram. This is, our, remember, our second thing we're going to talk about, and this is a tree diagram. And so a tree diagram, here's a kind of a tree diagram example. In a particular department at a college, 85% of students are female, 70% of the female students end up graduating, and 90% of the male students end up graduating. And we're going to draw a tree diagram to represent this. So here's how you draw a tree diagram. You start off with your population. That's everybody. And then we split it up, in this case, into male and female. And the question says that 85% are female. So on this branch, I'm going to write 0.85. And then, of course, everybody in the population is either male or female. So I'm going to put 0.15 on this branch. Then up here, I'm going to write graduate and graduate complement. Let's practice that notation, not graduate. And down here, graduate and graduate complement. Now, up here, what percent of males end up graduating? Well, that's 0.9, and this ends up being 0.1. Obviously, if 90% graduate, 10% don't graduate. For females, it's going to be 0.7 here, and then 0.3 don't graduate. So we're not quite done with our tree diagram because we have four different outcomes out here we have to talk about. And the way you figure out those four different outcomes is to multiply all the way through the branches. So what I'm going to do, if find this number up here, I'm going to do 0.15 times 0.9. That gets me 0.135. In other words, 13.5% of the, all the students are male and graduate. Then to get this number, I'm going to do 0.15 times 0.1. That's going to be 0.015. 1.5% of students are male and did not graduate. 
then keeping going, this is going to be 0.595. That's female students and graduated. And then 0.255 is female students and did not graduate. So those are the four possible outcomes that you think about. Okay, And we're going to move on to the next page and talk about this in a little more detail. Okay, so here we're going to uh, answer some questions about a tree diagram. So this, in this vertical bar, the given that conditional probability kind of stuff is going to come up. So this first question is, what's the probability someone graduates given that they are female? Well, if you think about that, that's of all the females, what percent of them graduate? So isn't that this number right here? That's not what the 0.7 actually means? Sure enough, the answer here is 0 0.7. And I've been a little loosey-goosey with whether I'm talking about decimals or percents. Usually when you talk about probability, you write here as a decimal, a number less than one. So I'm going to try to stick with that there, even though I did not do it on the previous Venn diagram example. Okay. Over here, probability that someone graduates and is female, well, that's what this number means right here, right? That's the probability someone is female and graduates. So that's 0.595. Then the probability that someone just graduates in general. Well, where are the people that graduate in general? Well, it's this number, but it's also this number. So we can just add those two together, and we get 0.135 plus 0.595 gives us 0.73. 73% of people graduate. Okay. Now, this last one's a little bit tricky. This is the probability that someone is male given that they graduated. Well, the given that, again, think about it as a fraction. On the bottom is all the graduates. On the top is of those graduates who are the male ones. So on the bottom is all the graduates. Well, we just learned that's 73% or 0.73. On the top is what percent of those 73% of graduates are male. Well, that's these guys right here. So it's 0.135. And that ends up being about 0.18, what does it say, uh, about 185. It's actually about 1849, but good enough. Okay, That's a very typical kind of tree diagram. Often for a tree diagram, once you have the tree diagram drawn, that's the hard part. The easy part is actually answering the questions. This is an unusual application of a tree diagram. It's kind of a surprising result. So in a population, 2% of people have a serious medical disease. And I'm kind of talking about something like kind of AIDS or kind of something serious like that. There is a test for the disease, but it only correctly detects the presence of the disease 99% of the time. So what the, one way to think about that is 1% of people who actually have the disease, the test comes up negative. Okay? That's sometimes called a false negative. For people that, without the disease, which is 98%, 98% of the population, the test correctly detects the absence of the disease 95% of the time. Okay? So that might mean that uh, the, that's called a false positive. So let's draw a tree diagram to kind of represent this idea. Okay? So first of all, here's our population. And let's go disease and disease complement. Well, 0.02 have the disease, which means 0.98 don't have the disease. And everybody's going to take a test. It can, test can come up positive or negative. For these 2% of the people, it's going to come up positive 99% of the time. Obviously, it'll come up negative 1% of the time. For people without the disease, it's going to come up positive, negative 95% of the time, and then 0.05 here. So now we multiply through to get the results. So this is going to be 0 0.0198. Some of these numbers get a little bit small, so it's important to kind of be careful with your decimals. This is 0 0.0002, tiny number. This is 0 0.049, a little bit less than 5%. And this is the biggest one. This is 0.931. Okay? Now, the second part of this question I'm going to do up here. Uh, it says, find the probability you have the disease given that you're positive. This is a kind of a real-world question. The test came up positive. What's the probability you actually have the disease? Well, if you think about this for a second, where are the people who had, pos had positive results? Well, it's this group and this group. So on the bottom of this fraction goes those who had positive results. So that number is 0.19, sorry, point, no, shoot, where's my eraser? It's 0 0.0198 plus 0.049. And then on top is just of those people who actually had the disease. 
Well, that's just the top number, which is 0 0.0198. So this ends up being on the bottom, we get 0 0.0688. On the top, we get 0 0.0198. And that works out to actually be 0 0.2878, let's say, which is pretty amazing. It's 28.78%. Again, think in the real world what that means. The test came up positive. But what's the probability you actually have the disease? About le almost less than 30% chance. And why is that? Well, it's because the presence of the disease is relatively small, and the probability of getting a false positive is actually relatively high overall. So that means this number is actually way larger than the ends up than this number. And that's how way tests actually are designed. Um, it's actually you know much. Kind of think, what's a better case? You'd rather be in this category, you got a false positive, but actually you end up not having the disease, than this group, where it says you actually have the disease, but the test uh, said you didn't. Okay? Kind of a surprising result. And we'll talk about it a little bit more uh, a little bit in future chapters.